Vishiti Putra Atra Surupam Rupam Tasakajamui Puri Maturi Sri Guru Guravi Gauru Chandra Radha Krishna Bhaktai Radha Tas my maha prema sampradaya Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste First of all, I offer my sustain and devat puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadeva Paramaratha Tama, Guru Pada Padma, Anitta Lila Pravishta Om Vishnupada, Ashtotara Satasi, Rupanuga Acharyavaya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vanchakal, Today we are so blessed, so fortunate to observe the Divine Appearance Day of Saptam Goswami Satchidananda Silvaknot Thakur. Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine Gaura Shakti Surupaya Rupa Nuga Varayate 
we bow down to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He is the Gauru Shakti Swarup, manifestation in this world of the full mercy of Sri Gadada Pandit. Rupanu Gabarayate, and the best among the Rupanuga, those who are following Rupa Goswami outwardly, and Sri Rupa Manji internally are called Rupanuga. Today is his divine appearance day. He was born in the village of Ulagram. In the mid 19th century, he went to Calcutta where he studied at the university and he was very, very close to the Tagore family. In fact, one of his student friends was Rabindranath Tagore who received the Nobel Prize for Literature. So in his youth, he was a part of the um, Badalok, very high-class intellectual, the intelligentsia of Bengal, who were <coughs> discovering so many new things, new ways of expression in, in art and literature and music. So even when he was a young student, he published his first book, Pariyadi. Pariyadi was an epic English poem describing the adventures of the Vedic king Porus and how he was in battle with Alexander the Great and that he was already fascinated from his childhood by this meta-narrative of the interaction between the Vedic culture of the East and the, the seat of the Western culture was ancient Greece. So he wrote this epic poem, the Poriyadi, when he was a young student in English. He became involved with the uh, Brahmo Samaj, but he was not satisfied with them because although they were dedicated to purifying so many misconceptions and social problems which had become mixed up in Hinduism. But at their root they were impersonists. He studied Christianity and he thought, oh, Christianity is superior to the philosophy of this Brahma Samaj because even though they are trying to observe Vedic culture, they are following the conception of demons, Mayavad. If you look at the history of of the world, from Hiranyakashipu to Ravan all the, and Kamsa Maharaj, they're all Mayavadis, impersonalists. So impersonalism is the philosophy of Asuras, because they very vehemently deny the person, that re reality is a personality. So gradually, gradually, he, he came to discover the Sri Chaitanya Chadamrita and was very inspired by the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he was young, his father passed away and he had to take responsibility for his family. So he went to law school and he became a, a district a deputy magistrate. He moved to Orissa and lived in the village of Choti Mangalpur. And there he inherited uh, that the village, the land there was owned by his grandfather. And there he inherited the deity which had been in his family for 500 years since the time of Nityananda Prabhu. And that deity was Sisi Radha Madhava Ki so he has written that beautiful bhajan, Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari, to his deity. 
after some time, because the, the uh, government at that time, it was the British government, they posted him in Jagannath Puri to be the magistrate there. And they also appointed him to, to be in charge, overseeing the Jagannath temple. He was married and he had 13 children. So you can just imagine how his life was very busy. Being in charge of the administration of the Jagannath temple. Having a job during the day as a magistrate. Taking care of his wife and 13 children. He would take rest at about 10 o'clock at night and sleep only for a few hours, waking up just after midnight. Then he would chant not less than 64 rounds and write his beautiful poems, beautiful Vaishnav songs containing the essence of all Siddhanta. And then he would do that until from midnight until about four or five o'clock. Then he would take a little breakfast and then set off and work. Then he would work all day and when he came back from work, then he would tell his son, Bhimala Prasad, oh, now I am going preaching. And Bhimala Prasad, who later became our Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Thakur, <laughs> carrying the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu underneath his arm, he would follow his father out in the evening to make a Namahata programs. Uh, meeting with people here and there in their homes, just as we are meeting together today. We are only carrying on that tradition of Namahata, the marketplace of the holy name. And so he would preach and then come home and again take rest at 10 o'clock. This was his life. A very disciplined. Fully, fully dedicated. In complete avesh, complete absorption. He met his Gurudev, Sri Dupinabihari Goswami. When he was, Sri Bhaktinath Thakur was actually 42 years old. That time his Gurudev was only 30 years old. Uh, but he was very renowned and learned scholar. And very prominent among the Goswamis of Bhaknapara. Very, on the other side of the Ganges from Navadu, from the Mayapur, nearby. So, he received initiation and he began to write. Appreciating his writings, all the Goswami community of Bhaknapara bestowed upon him the title Bhakti Vinod, because his name was Kedanath Datta. But appreciating his beautiful contribution to literature, all the Goswami community of Vagnapara, they awarded him with the title Sila Bhaktinod Thakur. And also the title Saptam Goswami, the seventh Goswami. Why was that? Because for hundreds of years, the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been lost. But Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur, he was wandering all over Navadvip, chanting the holy names, praying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his heart revealed to him, where is Anta Dweep, Siddhanta Dweep, Godrun Dweep, Mata Dweep, Kola Dweep, Ritu Dweep, Janu Dweep, Mota Druma Dweep, Ruta Dweep. All the nine islands and what pastimes have taken place in each island and the significance in the bar of each island. Srila Bhakti Nantako's divine experience of performing parakrama he has described in Navadi Bhava Taranga. How when he came to the place called the Arkatirtha, he had darshan of the sun god. Hmm? How when he came to the in Rudadvip, he came to the place which is none different from Deer Samir. There he saw 
Lord Shiva. Dancing. Because Gopishwa Mahadev is the protector of the Rasa Lila. And by his mercy entered and saw the Rasa Lila. And there in, in one kunj he saw Radha and Krishna. And he saw Barana Tadit Basataravali Kamala Manjriyun Naab Saribara Varsha Satata Vayasa Swasananda Sukata Dham He saw a very beautiful young maidservant of Radha and Krishna whose complexion was like lightning whose cloth was dark and sparkling with stars like the night sky who was twelve and a half years old who came with the tray on her hand with Karpur for Karpur Seva to Radha and Krishna and whose residence was Swananda Sukhada Kunj and whose name was Kamala Manji it was himself when he was doing Parakram so he has revealed how by the power of Guru Kripa and the Dham Kripa, the power of Harinam, Gora Nam and Gora Dham, he realized the sweet pastimes of Radha Krishna in Vrindavan and entered into their Nitya Nikunja Seva. He wrote so many poems and he's been called the seventh Goswami because just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave four missions, sorry, four aspects to his mission, to the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. First of all, Lupta Tirtha Uddhara, to discover the lost holy places in Braja. Then, Vibhigraha Pakash, to discover the lost deities of Vrindavan, Govinda Gopinath Badanam. Bhakti Granta Pranayana, to compose scriptures describing the path of pure bhakti. And Vaishnav Sadhacha Stapana to establish what is the proper behavior for Vaishnavas in all different stages of life, whether they are brahmacharis, grihastha, vanaprastha, sannyas, or whatever position they have, social position they have. So, the six Goswamis together, they fulfilled these four aspects of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in Braj Mandal. But it was one person alone, Sila Bhaktinath Thakur, who fulfilled the mission of discovering all the lost holy places, discovering the lost deities, mm-hmm. such as Adokshan Vishnu, the deity that was worshipped by Jagannath Mishra and later by Mahaprabhu when Jagannath Mishra passed away, mm-hmm. to make the Bhakti Granta Pranayan manifest, the Bhakti Grantas, which are just suitable for the mentality of the persons in this contemporary age. And Vaishnav Sadhacha Stapana, you can see in his Chaitanya Shiksha Amrita, how he explains exactly what are our responsibilities, depending on our social position and position in ashram in the modern time. Even our responsibility in relation to people of other religions, like Islam and Christianity. These details were not there in the Vedic literature. Srila Bhakti Nautako was the first one to address all of these things which are very important to people today. Especially he wrote so much about Harinam, the power of the holy name and how to overcome the ten offenses. He has written this in, especially in Jaiva Dharma, Bhajan Rahasya, Sri Harinam Chintamani and other works. He took the essence of all the important literature in our Sampradaya and rewrote it in a song version. For example, he has written songs, one or two songs even, about each verse of Shikshastakam, about each verse of Manashiksha, about each verse of Rupa Goswami's Namastakam, Raghunath Das Goswami's Manashiksha. In this way, he is this, um, translated the songs of the Goswamis and expanded upon them in very simple language that makes their deep bars ex- more accessible to everyone. He has given the essence of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 
and Ujjwal Nilamani in his songs of um, Kalyanakalpatru and Gita Mala and in Jaiva Dharma also. Jaiva Dharma is his main masterpiece. If you want to go deeply into bhajan, then you must carefully study Jaiva Dharma. It has essentially three parts. The first third of the book addresses the what is the meaning of Dharma? That is the the ontology the sorry, the teleology. The teleological purpose of the soul is only Krishna Prem. We exist to love God and serve God. And that so it is Jaiva Dharma. The teleological purpose of every soul is simply to love God. But sometimes the, the expression of that service becomes mixed with some material conceptions. And so the Dharma is no longer pure. It becomes mixed with karma, jnana, and yoga, and so on. And becomes mixed with the local customs. In this way, a, there is a proliferation of so many different faiths. But in truth, there is only one Dharma. Prem, Bhagavad Dharma, Shuddha Bhakti. Hmm? So he established this, this uh, through, in a very revolutionary way. Because previous acharyas, no one had written in the uh, genre of, of the novel. The novel was a new literary genre to India. And he wrote in that genre. In the middle part, there you have the explanation of Dashamul Shiksha. The one verse, and in that one verse, the ten teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all in one verse. So all devotees should know it. Do you know it? Amnaya praha tattam marimhya paramam sadava shaktim rasabdhim tadvenang sangscha jivam prakriti kavalitam tadvimuktang scha bhavad veda veda prakasam sakalim api harir Sadhanam Sudha Bhaktim Sadhyam Tapritim Medet Upadishati Janan Gaur Chandra Swayam Saha Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally instructed this to his followers that there are two things Praman and Prameya Praman means valid evidence and Prameya the things which are proven by that valid evidence so the Praman Tattva the valid evidence. The only way in which we can receive perfect knowledge is called Amnaya. Amnaya means Guru Parampara Dwara Prapta Veda Vakya. The statements of the Vedas which are received in the Sri Guru Parampara, the succession of perfected saints going back all the way to Brahma and to Krishna himself. This is the only way to receive perfect knowledge. So this is Praman. And then there are, this is the first teaching. And then there are nine Prameyas. Nine things which are proven by that Praman. First one, Paramatattva is not Brahman. The light of Brahman. Oh Paramatma. But Paramatattva is Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Paramatma and Brahman are only partial realization of the truth. And then the second teaching, sorry, the second Prameya, is that that see Krishna is Sarva Shakti Man. He has all Shaktis. Bahiranga Shakti, the external energy, Maya. Antaranga Shakti, the spiritual world, the spiritual potency. And Tatasta Shakti, the Jivas. But he's not only omnipotent. But he's also Rasabdin. He's the ocean of Rasa. All Rasas, all the flavors of ecstatic love. He's the object. And also the shelter is the Visha and Ashray of all the Rasas. Hmm? Then next one, Tadvinang Sang Jivam. The Jivas are Vibhinang Tattva. 
That means they are subjective portions, angsas, subjective separated portions of the Supreme Lord, specifically coming from His Tatasta Shakti. And there are two types. So the next teaching is Baddha Jivas, the conditioned souls of Prakriti Kavalitan. They are covered by Maya. Then they are, they are Nitta Baddha. Those are being conditioned from time with no beginning. Then Nitta Mukta. There are those who have always been liberated. Then Tadvi Mukta Nishtabhavat. Then Beda Beda Sakalam Mapi Hari. All of the Shaktis of the Lord, whether the spiritual or the material or the living entities, they are inconceivably bathed different and also obeyed, non-different from him. Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. So in this way, in seven Prameyas, the Sambandha Gyan, the knowledge of Sambandha, our context and relationship with God and His energies has been defined. Then the Abhideya Tattva, the process. Sadhanam Shuddha Bhakti. The Sadhana, the practice is Shuddha Bhakti. Not bhakti mixed with karma, jnana or yoga. And even the sadhana is not vaidhi bhakti. Because Krishna in Vrindavan cannot be attained by vaidhi bhakti. Vaidhi bhakti leads to vaikuntha. So shuddha bhakti means raganuga bhakti. And the goal of life is not Krishna. Or Radha. Or even Radha and Krishna. Sadhyam Pritim. The goal of life is love. Preeti. Love is so powerful, it, it controls even Radha and Krishna. So these are the ten teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a nutshell. They're called Dasamul. It means ten roots. Mul means root. If you will take these roots into your heart and deliberate upon them deeply, the roots will grow. When roots in the ground grow, they become grass. And then a cow will come and eat them. And turn them into milk. And then, Amritanam Prabhu will milk the cow. <laughs> and from that milk he will make ghee. And then that ghee will be mixed with a deep, with a wick. And it will be put on a punch per dip and lit, and then Radha Krishna's lotus feet will be worshipped with the light from that. Five rasas illuminate and worship the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So it begins with the Dashamul Shiksha, understanding clearly these teachings. And after some time, it will become. The frame which illuminates the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So that is the middle part of Jaiva Dharma. In the middle part, it concludes with the glories of the holy name. How to overcome ten offenses and chants. And then the third part is just Rasa Tattva. Understanding what is Bhakti Rasa. How Sadhana Bhakti becomes Bhava Bhakti and Bhava Bhakti becomes Rasamai Bhakti. It follows the lives of two devotees, Vijay Kumar and Brajanath, and how they meet their Diksha Guru and receive Diksha. And later they come to their Shiksha Guru. And as they become more and more purified, they become qualified for Manasik Seva, Raganuga Bhakti. Very wonderful. So Srila Bhakti Nautakur, explains exactly what is the qualification and how to enter into meditation and, and service to Radha Krishna in one spiritual form. Not so easy. When Srila Bhakti Nautaku was traveling here and there, once from Navadvip he set out and he went to Vrindavan, Braj Mandal, and he was doing Parakrama. And during his Parakrama, very close to Radha Kund, he came to Surya Kund. 
And there he met Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. He was more than 140 years old at that time. Srila hmm? Bhaktivinoda Thakur had met him before, earlier in Navadvip. Hmm? But on this particular time, when he came to have the association of his Shiksha Guru, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, at that time, there were some other Babas, Babajis who were staying with Jagannath Das Babaji as his uh, Shiksha disciples. And they came to Srila Bhakti Nautakur to complain. Hmm? Their complaint was this. Oh, we left our homes and our jobs and families, everything, to come here and be with Bab Babaji Maharaj so that we can engage in Asta Kaliya Leela Sparna. Serving Radha Krishna in their Nitya Leela 24 hours a day. But now we are here. Babaji Maharaj has not told us how to do it. But rather he told us to chop wood, hmm, to bring water, to water the garden, to plant brinjal eggplants. They said, look, if we wanted to grow eggplants in the garden, we could have stayed at home and done that. So why have you left everything and come here? Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Whatever Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj tells you to do, you should do that. Vaishnav Seva is transcendental. It may appear to be similar to something that you have done in your home. But when you are serving a Vaishnava, now you are coming under the shelter of Krishna's internal potency. Mahatmanastu Mamparta Daivim Prakti Mashrita. Though Vaishnava appears to be in this world, they are not in this world. Though everyone in this world is under the stringent laws of karma, Vaishnava is under the control, under the shelter of Krishna's internal potency. So when you take shelter of the guidance of a pure Vaishnava, now you also become free from the influence of Maya, from all karma, and come under the control of the internal potency. So Vaishnav Seva is not an ordinary activity. And gradually by serving Vaishnavas, what will happen? Nashta Preshu, Apadreshu, Nittam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhavati Uttamashtoke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki. Apadreshu, that means inauspicious things. Specifically, it means Nama Parad. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, you are not chanting purely. And without chanting, Without overcoming Nama Parat, you will never be able to enter into this smaran, continuous remembrance of Radha and Krishna. But by serving of Mahabhagavat Vaishnava every day and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from them every day, your anartas and Nama Parats will be destroyed and gradually you will become qualified. Everyone knows what is the qualification for Raghunuga Bhakti. The only qualification, Vobha, greed. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati Kritam Yadi Kutopila Bete Tatlo Yam Mapimola Mekalam Koti Jani Sukitar Nala Bete. If you want your heart to be fully saturated with Rasa, like a Rasa Gola which has been soaked in the syrup <laughs> for at least 48 hours. And if you take out that rasa gold, anywhere you touch it, rasa comes out. If you squeeze it, more rasa comes out. And still, when you open it, there's still more rasa inside. <laughs> so if you want your consciousness to be like that, saturated with pure rasa, then there's a price. If it's available anywhere, you should purchase it without delay. But what is the price? Tatu loyam, pimulam, ekalam, only greed. Koti Janma Sukitana Labyate. Even by here it means even by practicing Vaidhi Bhakti for millions of births, it's not available. So now you know what is the price to attain Raghavaga Bhakti. Only lolyam greed. But the problem is, how do you get greed? Huh? Where does the greed come from? So there's a great confusion among Vaishnava community and many 
There's a lot of hysteria around the subject of Raganuga Bhakti. Because it's about greed, and greed means to be hysterical, right? <laughs> no. Be very calm. What is greed? Srila Vishwachavitya Thakur, in his Raghavat Machandrika, he said, greed begins from Guru Pad Ashray. When we take shelter of a Braj Rasik Vaishnava, one who is actually Rasik and realized, from the moment we take shelter of them, some greed starts to come. That greed means Bhagavad Lila Bhagavad Madhurya Lila Madhurya Lobhama Isratha. The faith which is based upon a greed to relish the Madhurya, the sweetness of Krishna's pastimes. So Bhagavad Lila Madhurya Lobhama Isratha. So this is the beginning of greed. But this beginning is not enough to be able to take up the sadhana of Raghunuga Bhakti. And that greed gradually grows. Srila Vishnu Chakitakura said, Abhista Vastu Sakshat until you have in your heart the darshan of what it is you want to attain. And he quotes the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Yataya Tatma Parimbrijate So Madguna Kata Shavada Vidane Tata Tata Pasati Vastu Shukshmam Chakshurya Tayavanjana Samprayoktam. See, Krishna described to Uddhav, Yataya Tatma Parimrijate So. The heart is like a mirror, and you have to clean it by hearing and chanting. And the more it becomes cleansed by hearing it, Matguna Kata Shravana Bidane, hearing about my form and qualities and pastimes, then Tata Tata Pasati Vastu Shukshmam, the more you can begin to see me. Krishna said. Just like a person who has an eye disease. So the Ayurvedic doctor, Chakshurya Taivanjana Sampraktam. The Ayurvedic doctor smears some ointment upon the patient's eyes. And before, when he looked at the book with small print, could not see any, everything was blurred. But by the application of this ointment, then he looked, and even very small print he could see. He could see the subtle markings on the page. So Sri Krishna is saying this, as we go on hearing and chanting and remembering, the heart becomes cleansed, and then... Krishna said, you can see my form, which is very subtle. Madhbhava hmm? Anuttama, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita said, my form is very, very subtle. So, greed does not mean, oh, I have become hysterical now. <laughs> I am really, really interested and enthusiastic to do Raghunuga Bhakti, therefore I am qualified. But greed is a real thing, based on internal experience. As the heart is cleansed and one begins to realize in the stage of Nishta, see Krishna's form and qualities in Ruchi, his associates, and his sweetness. Then seeing this in the heart at the time of chanting, they want, oh, how the associates are serving. I want to be like them. Now you can take up the sadhana of Raghunuga Bhakti. So Srila Vishnu Chakuchakur, after describing that greed begins its development from Guru Padasrai, taking shelter of a Rasik Guru, and develops up to the stage of seeing what it is your Ishtavastu, the object that you want. And then he said, Once greed has developed up to that point, not the beginning point, it's completed the development up to that point of seeing one's Ishtavastu, what it is you want to attain. Now a person is very inquisitive. How do I, now I have seen it, how do I attain it for myself? Now Raghunuga Bhakti comes. Krishna Sparam Janam Chasya Prastam Nijasa Remember Krishna along with an associate. 
So in that stage, devotees can chant Hari Nam, and in his heart, see Krishna along with the associate, and they're focusing on that associate. And by focusing on the moods of that associate, those moods gradually come to him, and his chitta transforms and takes on a form just like the associate. Then you can follow the next verse of instruction in Raganuga Bhakti. Rupa Goswampad said, Seva sadaka rupena siddha rupena chatrahi. Serve outwardly, following your acharyas, and serve inwardly, following the eternal associates of, of Braja. So this is the process. If the Siddha day is not a kalpana, an imagination, vikalpa, imagination, it will appear of its own accord due to absorption in remembering, that means seeing in a spurti in one's heart, the, how the associates are serving. It will arise of its own accord, just like a telkata, a small worm trapped in a hole by a bee, is terrified, and he sees the bee coming to eat him, and the bee is making a loud vibration, but he cannot get in the hole. And Sila Narad Mukmuni, he said, "Kita peshas kitaro dhaku diam tamanusvaram samramba bhai yogena vinateta sarupatam." Just as the small worm in the hole is trapped by the bee and becomes absorbed, so then that worm being absorbed in the bee transforms and becomes himself a bee. Hmm? So in the same way, by Krishna Smaram Janam Chasya, being absorbed in the Smaran, and Smaran means the sporty in the heart of the associates of Radha and Krishna, then being absorbed in them, you will become just like them. And in this way, a Siddha Rupa appears, and you can serve. And if you try to do it artificially by speculation, Vikalpa, then Srila Bhakti Nautakur in Bhajan Rahasya, he said that Adhikara Nala Bibe Siddhate Abhavi Viparya Bodhi Janmi Shakti Abhavi If you don't attain the qualification, that is Asakti, the state of, in Ruchi you can see the associates in your heart and then Asakti will come and then there is Abhas of your Siddhadeya, the first shadow of your Swarup appears. But if you will try to imitate, Prakrita Sahaja means imitation, then you don't have the support of Swarup Shakti. Then what will happen? Viparyai Buddhi. Your intelligence will become bewildered. And instead of becoming more and more free from avidya, ignorance, asmita, ego, rag and dvesh, attachment and aversion, and abhinivesh, absorption in this world, you will become bewildered and become more absorbed in this world, more ego. Hmm? So Sila Bhakti Nautako instructed those disciples of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, don't think his service is an ordinary thing, just serve him, hear from him, gradually, gradually your nartas will be dissipated and by his mercy you can enter into the Nitya Seva of Radha and Krishna. Sila Bhakti Nautako very much protected the path of Raganuga Bhakti through his writings. Sri Jiva Goswami has also said very beautifully that what is Raganuga? Rag means the spontaneous attraction of a, the sense to its object. If there's a room full of people but one of them is exquisitely beautiful then without even thinking your eyes will go to that person. Because the eye spontaneously seeks out beauty without any calculation, without volition, without any intentional uh, uh, application of the intelligence. Just the senses just go there. So that is called rag. When all the senses have as their only object of rag the Nam, Rup, Gun, and Leela of Krishna, that is called transcendental rag. And that rag exists only in the Nitya Siddha, the eternal associates, the Nitya Parikas of Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world. It is not here. But, if a disciple is listening with great honor and great faith to the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna from the lips of his Gurudev, then a spurti will come, a vision in his heart, and he will see, oh, how beautiful, how Rupa Manjari is serving Radha and Krishna. And when he is the rag of that associate, let's say Rupa Manjari, that rag is glowing like the moon. 
And just as the, the moon is shining in the sky, and a chandrika, a moonbeam, shines on a crystal, and that crystal now becomes illuminated. That's called a spatika mani. So in the same way, the disciple's heart, which has become purified, chaito darpanamarjanam, by purified by Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So the disciple's heart, like a spatik money, is like a crystal. And hearing the pastimes of the beautiful associates of Radha Krishna, their rag, like the moon, shines. And that ray of their rag illuminates the heart of that disciple. And his heart becomes, that crystal becomes ulasit, expanded, shining, overflowing with joy. And now, he's chanting, not because someone told him to chant. He's not chanting because scripture says you have to chant, otherwise you'll go to hell. But he's chanting spontaneously, uh, because he has some taste, ruchi in the rag, some taste in those feelings emanating from that associate. Then, the hearing, chanting and remembering, which is initiated by, which is instigated by, a taste in their feelings. That is called Raganuga Bhakti. So it's real. It's not imagination. It's not something hysterical. <laughs> it's not just a fascination or an interest. But one has to experience this. We can, if we serve our Gurudev and follow his teachings, after some time, we can realize it directly. Sila Bhakti Nautako was always protecting the path of Bhakti. Before Srila Bhakti Nautaku came to this world, there was a great necessity for his appearance. Because after Srila Narutam Srinivas and Shamananda, many Abhasampradayas are spread everywhere. Aul, Baal, Kartabhaja, Nera, Darad, Beshasai, Sahajya, Saki Betki, Smarta Japgosai, Atibari, Chudadari, Goranga Nagari, Totuka Hi E Terasangi Nahikari. Thirteen Apasampradayas, Al Bao, Goranga Nagari, and they had spread everywhere. And it was very difficult to discover pure bhakti. Just as the uh, Ganges came to heaven, but it did not come to, it came down to heaven, but it did not come to earth. So then Bhagarat Maharaj, he did austerities and he brought the Ganges flowing down to this earth. So in the same way, the current of Shuddha Bhakti had been almost stopped completely at the time before Srila Bhakti Nautakur. Thakur. So Srila Bhakti Nautakur Thakur is like the Bhagarat Maharaj who brought the current of pure Bhakti again flowing throughout the whole world all the way to North Carolina even. So, when Srila Bhakti Nautaku was in Orissa, there was one yogi, very powerful yogi named Bishkishan. He was staying in the forest and he had told everyone, I am Mahavishnu. And, on, and he wrote a poem that on this particular day, then I will rise up and show my powers and I, everyone should join with me and we will kill all the malachas. That means all the British who were controlling India, that they would have a revolution, overflow, overthrow them. So Srila Bhakti Nautaku was work, working in the government of the British then, and they sent him to uh, try to investigate this case. So this yogi, Bishkishan, that's the way that his name was Visvaksen, but that's the way they say it, Bishkishan. So he had said, I am Supreme Lord, and so, all very beautiful young girls from the local villages should come to me at night and we will have Rasalila. <laughs> and he had uh, violated, the, he had compromised the character of so many young girls in the villages in Orissa. And their husbands and parents, they were furious. And they had complained to the police. Srila Bhakti Thakur, he wanted to solve this problem. 
Sila Bhaktanur Thakur went there and told him, I want to be lenient and give you a chance. So within 12 days, you should recant. You should disavow. You should say, I am not Mahavishnu, I am not Krishna, I cannot do Rasalila, I will, and I will not try to overthrow the government. Hmm? Within 12 days. But if you don't, then I will have to arrest you, and you will be prosecuted. Hmm? That yogi said, Ah, oh, I know you. By my mystic power, I knew you are coming. You are Bhaktino Thakur. But I am the Supreme Lord. No one can stop me. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, I have given you a chance. You have 12 days. So then he went away. <laughs> After 12 days discussion, he did not disavow. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur came with so many policemen and they surrounded him. And he told the police, arrest this person. But when they came to arrest him, Bishkishan had very long <laughs> matted locks, jatta. And he shook his head like this, and his jatta went everywhere, and fire was coming out from his hair. And those policemen, they dropped their sticks and their guns and ran away. They were terrified. They thought, oh, he really is God. <laughs> but Srila Bhakti Nautaku was not afraid. And alone, he grabbed him by the hair and took scissors and cut off his jatta, cut off all of his locks. He was storing his yoga shakti in his hair. He cut off his locks and arrested him and put him in jail. So then they were waiting for the court case. So on the, on the night before the court case, Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur was in intense pain in his stomach and all of his family became sick. His wife was crying. Oh, that yogi has cursed us, he will kill us all. Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur said, don't worry, just chant all the names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. If you chant the holy name, then no karma can touch you, no devatas can touch you, no yogis, no curse, no mantra, tantra, or voodoo, or anything <laughs> can touch you if you take shelter of the holy name. So somehow he survived through that night, and the next day he went to the court case. So when they were in court, then the yogi was smiling. He said, oh, do you remember what I did to you last night? That was me. Hmm? So if you don't let me free, I'll kill you. Srila Bhakti Nautaku never listened to him. <laughs> and he sentenced him to a lenient sentence, only some, a few years in jail. So then he was put in jail and that yogi fasted completely. And after 21 days, Ram Nam Sattahe, he passed away. So in this way, Srila Bhakti Nautaku very strictly protected Dharma. He was very active in, in society uh, to protect Dharma. In Jaiva Dharma, Srila Bhakti Nautaku has described all the siddhantas from beginning to end. The basic tattvas, Nam tattva and Rasa tattva, and the bhajan. bhajan confidential bhajan, secrets of bhajan. But he's described them in a general, in principle. But in his book, Bhajan Rahasya, he's actually revealed his own method of bhajan. The verses that he himself used to chant and meditate upon. In the middle of the night, he would be chanting the holy name. Then he would stop and then sing a verse and then chant again and become lost in the realization of the nectar of those verses. So the very verses that Srila Bhakti Thakur meditated on, as he was having his pastime of going through the stages, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhav and Prem, he has given in Bhajan Rahasya. So I remember when my Gurudev was... Oh, does everyone have that book, Bhajan Rahasya? Who has... Do you have the edition of by my Gurudev? Because it has a, a very extensive commentary also. So I was with my Gurudev when he was writing his commentary. Every morning I would go in his room when he was chanting. In Samadhi, in trance. And then he would come in out of trance. Not like completely out. Only Arda Bayadasha, that means half in trance and half out of trance.
and both one year devoted to him. He was already devoted in front of Gurudev. Who is he? Gurudev. His name is Mahabhav. Gurudev's eyes became big. Mahabhav. <laughs> <laughs> Later he became Krishna Karunya, a very famous devotee of Guru. So, that time Gurudev said, as I am writing this commentary on Bhajan Rahasya or Srila Thakur, I am realizing how Srila Thakur in the form of Kamala Manjari is relishing all of these verses. So you should understand this commentary is a Realized, completely realized knowledge. So if you want to do bhajan, read Jaiva Dharma thoroughly from beginning to end and then take shelter of Srila Bhakti Nautaku's bhajan rahasya. Srila Bhakti Nautaku was very, very generous, very, very liberal. He invited persons from all walks of life to participate in his preaching and his publications. And, but later, some persons misinterpret him to be actually accommodating things other than pure bhakti. And this is why in the next generation, you know, Srila Bhakti Nautaku gave two very, very vital, important contributions to this world. Mayapur, the discovery of the birthplace, of Mahaprabhu and Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saratakur. Yes. So because he was very generous and very liberal and very accommodating, in order to spread a broad net and invite everyone into the family of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, some persons took it that he, he will accommodate things other than Shuddha Bhakti. And this is why the, in the next generation, Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saratakur had to tighten up the screws a little bit. Hmm? Understand? <laughs> so, I want to speak a little about Srila Bhakti Thakur's transition towards the end of his life when he accepted Babaji Vesh and was doing his Nirjan Bhajan at the end of his life. He has written, when he retired, he left the preaching in Calcutta and came to Jagannath Puri. So he wrote, A person may ask me, why have I left that place, that center of the academic study and the company of the intelligentsia in Calcutta to come and be alone in Jagannath Puri? The reason is this. When I first set out, on this mission to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and I began to write the magazine Sajjan Toshani. The effect was tremendous. It was beyond my expectations. We saw that those who were confused about the... they were practicing bhakti but they were confused. They came into the line of pure bhakti being attracted by the splendor of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message. Not only that, but atheistic persons who were intellectuals they became devotees also and joined this preaching movement. He made a movement called the Navadi Dham Pracharini Sabha. That was a, a group for the development of Navadi Dham. Navadi Dham Pracharini Sabha. He said even Mayavadis, they also came and joined us and they took uh, pleasure now in the, the path of pure bhakti. Even musicians, interested in music, they joined us and they were relishing the beautiful songs, glorifying the Supreme Lord. You know, there's one Apasan Pradaya, one sect called the Baals, and they're very expert at singing. They travel everywhere, they have long hair, and they're like hippies, they go everywhere and <laughs> sing songs about bhakti, but really they don't follow any proper practical principles or anything. They smoke ganja and like have it's like a spiritual woodstock, you know? <laughs> so, but not spiritual. Pseudo-spiritual. So, but their music is very popular. So Srila Bhakti Nautaku even wrote a songbook under a pseudonym. 
called Chanda, a collection of songs by Chanda Bao in the Bao Sangeet style. But these songs were all full of the moods of pure bhakti. So in this way, he was tricking everyone by hook or by crook and bringing them into the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, I could not believe my eyes. It was uh, wonderful and beyond my expectations. But after some time, just when it was going so nicely, then all the Apasampradayas who had hidden themselves like glowworms hide themselves from the light of the sun, they began to call out again. And they began to infect, they began to infest the association. And all the Apasampradayas which had driven back, they began to rise up again. And I was devastated. I thought, what can I do? I went to Navadip Dham and prayed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But even there I could not find solace. So then I left Navadip and I came here to Jagannath Puri. And weeping I rolled around in the golden sand of the beach of Jagannath Puri. Alas, alas! This movement of Mahaprabhu, again it's becoming choked. And just then, I heard the words of Prabodhananda Saswati Thakur in my heart. Kala Kali Balini Indriya Vairi Vaga Sri Bhakti Maga Hiyakanta Kakoti Rudha Aha Kwayami Vikala Kimaham Karahumi Chaitanya Chandra Yadi Nadya Kripam Karosi Kala Kali Balini Indriya Now it is uh, the time of Kali Yuga Balina Indriya Varivaga and the, my enemies, the senses have become very strong. Sri Bhakti Marga here, Kantakur Koti Ruta, and the path of pure bhakti has become overgrown with thousands of thorns. Alas, alas. Aha Koyami Vikala, my heart is breaking. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Kimaham Karomi, what will I do now? Chaitanya Chandra Triyadi Nadi Yadi Kripam Karhusi. If you will not give mercy to me now, what will I do? This is the meaning of Acharya. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is rolling on the ground and crying in the sand, in the golden sand of Jagannath Puri, weeping. For whom? For you. For you. For me. This is Acharya. So as he was weeping in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to him and said, O oh, Sajjan Toshani, Hey Thakur Bhaktinod, now you cannot do anything. The conditioning of the living entities in Kali Yuga is very strong. Their karmas from thousands of lifetimes, even when they try to take up the path of bhakti, but then, again, their previous samskaras start to rise up and overpower them. They are very weak. Even if you speak so much harikata, it will bounce off their hearts. Because they have other desires, anya bilas. So now is not the time. Now you should sit here and pray for their deliverance by singing the holy names of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. By the power of your chanting, it will purify the world. Yasam Hare Kutut Gitam Punati Bhuvanatrayam would have said, when the gopis chant the glories of Krishna, it purifies the three worlds. And the living entities will develop some sukriti by which they will gradually come to the path. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was staying in Puri and weeping and chanting loudly. And by his prayers, he called the descent from the spiritual world of so many great personalities. Nija Seva Kataraka Ranji Vidum Vidudakrita Hunkrita Singabaram Varnagata Balisha Sandapadam Pranamami Sada Prabhupada Padam Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Sutaku is like a shining moon surrounded by the stars. The stars are not new. They are eternally the associates of the moon. 
So by the weeping of Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur, though Bhakti Stansu Thakur was, had already appeared in this world, but some other stars appeared around him. Like Srila Bhakti Pagyan Keshav Goswami, Srila Bhakti Rachak Shida Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Tai Madha Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vidanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Nautaku was crying there and made them all from the spiritual world rain onto this world. Hmm? And after that there was explosion of Bhakti everywhere. Srila Bhakti Nautaku Ki! In 1915, in the summer of 1915, just before Srila Bhakti Nautaku left this world, he spoke very privately with our Jagat Guru Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Sanswata. And we know this because there is one letter of Srila Bhakti Sanswata. After Srila Bhakti Nautako had left the world, then his Navadip Dham Pracharini Sapa was going on. And Lalit Prasad, he was uh, leading this. And his Silbhima Prasad, that's our Prabhupada. He was also there, but some disagreement came about. And others in the group, they did not properly understand the teachings of Srila Bhakti Nautaku. Hmm? Prabhupada Bhakti Nautaku said, don't think that you can know the teachings of Srila Bhakti Nautaku by reading his books. That will create an interest. That will create inquisitiveness. One can only know his teachings by giving submissive oral reception to the Shabda Brahma, the transcendental sound, as it appears on the lips of a Shuddha Vaishnav. Then you can know, otherwise not. Hmm? said, I may know Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami may know. Whether Vyasadev knows or not is not certain. But one thing is certain. And that is that the Bhagavatam is only known by pure bhakti flowing in the heart. Na buddhya, not by your intelligence. Na chati kaya, and not by reading the commentaries, the purports. Only by Shabda Brahma. Srila Bhakti Nautaku himself wrote in English, He reasons ill who says that Vaishnavas die when thou art living still in sound. The Vaishnav dies to live and living tries to spread the holy name around. So the pure Vaishnava is still living in sound. But if you take a book, then listen. I don't hear anything. Huh? Living in sound means living in the living sound that comes from the lips of pure Vaishnava. It can only come in Sadhu Sangha, the actual Anubhuti realization. Then you should hear first, then read, then deliberate on it, then bhakti will come. In the very end of Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Tat Srinvan Supatan Vicharana Paro Bhaktya Vimuchendra First hear, then what you've heard, read it. Reading is called Pat. But if you read after hearing, it's called Supat, beautiful reading. Tat Srinvan Supatan Vicharana Then deeply, deeply meditate on what you have heard and what you have read. Paro Bhaktya Vimuchendra then pure bhakti will come and will be liberated from maya completely. So, after the disappearance of Srila Bhakti Nautakur, some problems came and the Apasampradayas were rising up even within the Navaditdan Pracharini Sabha. So at that time, Srila Bhakti Nautakur broke away and started the Gaudiya Mat. And one of his friends who was still in the Pracharini Sabha was uh, upset. Oh, why, are you, why have you become a separatist? And you've gone to Mayapur and making your own mission and also criticizing us. Why? So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazatako wrote a letter to his old friend who was still in that previous institution. And he said, in the summer of 1915, just before the disappearance of Srila Bhakti Thakur, I was sitting with him and he said this, these words to me. 
He said that within our Navadip Dham Pracharini Sabha, the corrupted seed of the conception of Rupa Kaviraj, of the Atibadi Sampadaya, perhaps you know the history of Rupa Kaviraj. He, he was a leader of one Apasampadaya Atibadis at the time of Vishwachagri Thakur. Very learned, but he described Raghunuga Bhakti, but a misinterpretation of the practice. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, within our Sangha, the corrupted seed of the conception of Rupa Kaviraj, of the Ativadis, will sprout up and it will turn into a snake. Just as a snake lives within the hollow of a tree, that snake will rise up in the hollow of it, the hearts of the devotees and bite them and poison their bhakti. Then, Prabhupada Bhakti Sansu Thakur said to Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur, I promise you that if this ever happens, I will dedicate my whole life to stamp it out. To stop it. So, because the question was, why did you leave? And now you are preaching so strongly even against us. So this is the reason. Because Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur had predicted this. And just before he left, I made this vow. I would stop the rise of the Apasampradayas within the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sangha in Navadvita. So, in this way, then, Srila Bhakti Thakur, peacefully, joyfully, he departed from this world, knowing that the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in very good hands. And the rest is history. How glorious and successful. Being completely empowered by Srila Bhakti Nautaka, with Gaura Shakti Swarup, was completely empowered and that mercy has come everywhere and is touching us today. So I want to uh, conclude our discourse about Srila Bhakti Nautaka today by singing a couple of his songs and just discussing little what did Nectar he has hidden for us in his songs. These songs are coming deep from his heart, from his realization. And they are impregnated with unlimited nectar. Just like a father has gone from this world but left a will for his child. And in the will it says, when you are 21 you will inherit all these gold coins and jewels in the treasure chest. But you are like, whatever, 10 years old and you cannot get anything. Yeah? But you have to wait one day to come. So in the same way, Srila Bhaktinath Thakur has kept so many beautiful jewels. All the pastimes of Srimad Bhagavatam, even the pastimes which are not in Srimad Bhagavatam, that he's realized as well. He's hidden them within his songs and kept them like jewels in his will for us. Those are the Anugatya of Srila Bhaktinath Thakur. Those are in the Vichadara, the current of Srila Bhaktinath Thakur's conception. And all we have to do is follow our Gurudev, sing his songs every day, chant Harinam, and one day we'll come of age and the box will open and all the jewels <laughs> of the Nitya Nibritya Nikunja Seva to Radha Krishna will come into our heart. So Srila mm, Nityananda Prabhu, he has opened the marketplace of the Holy Name, giving Shuddha Nam to everyone, just at the price of your faith. And Srila Bhakti Nautakur Thakur said, I am a sweeper in the marketplace of the Holy Name. Hmm? Because, see, Bhakti Maragahiya Kantaka Koti Durga, the path of Bhakti is covered in thorns. So how will people come to receive the pure name from Nityananda Guru? So Srila Bhakti Nautakur Thakur, by his life and by his writings, it is as if he has taken a broom and he is sweeping away the thorns. So the path into the marketplace of the Holy Name will become soft and smooth for all of us. Yeah. My Param Guru Dev Srila Bhakti Pragyan Maharaj used to say, it is my only desire that birth after birth I can become just one straw in the broom of Srila Bhakti <laughs> uh, to assist him in that sweeping. Yeah. So this is our desire today. Yeah. Make that Sankalpa in your heart. 
that in your whole life you can just be, because a broom needs many straws. So I can see. There are many straws. So all come together and be tied together very tightly and become the broom in the hand of Srila Bhakti Nautaku to sweep the path so that all can enter into the marketplace of the Holy Name. Okay. So, uh, we'll first we'll sing Srila Bhakti Nautaku's Ramani Shiromani.
One o'clock in the morning, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is singing and weeping in the middle of the night. That house of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, where is it? In Gautam Dweep, Varsana is there. In Gautam Dweep, Nandagaon is also there. Yavat is also there. And in between Nandagaon and Yavat, there is Terakadamba. So just as Srila Rupa Goswami's Bhajan Kutir is in Terakadamba, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Gaura Shakti Surupaya Rupa Anuga being the supreme follower of Srila Rupa Goswami is doing bhajan in the Terakadamba of Navadvip, that is Vananda Sukhada Kunj in Godrup. In the night time he is singing this beautiful, beautiful song. And the Mahabhar Surupa of Radhika is manifesting before his divine eyes. Ramani Shiramana of all the Ramani, that means those who make Sri Krishna relish the rasa of Raman, loving pastimes, the crest jewel of all of them, Ramani Shiramani, is one very sweet and beautiful princess, the daughter of King Brishapana. She's not married to Krishna, but still being overwhelmed with love, she forgets everything, sacrifices everything, and in the middle of the night, she's putting on Neela Basana Paritana. It's a dark moon night, so she's dressing in a dark blue cloth, so that as she goes into the forest, Jinna Paratajini. Her body, which is shining like gold, is covered by a dark blue cloth. So when she sneaks out of her house in Yavat, no one will see her moving in the dark night. As Radhika is being wrapped in the dark blue cloth by Rupa Manjari, Kamala Manjari, herself, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, then as Radhika feels the touch of this cloth, then her bhav is so gambir. Why? Because Neela, it is the color of Shaham Sundar. And not only that, but when Sri Krishna stole the cloth of Shimati Radhika, Vastrahar and Leela, when Krishna returned the cloth to the Braj Gopis, now the cloth had become fragrant with the touch of his hand which smells like Agur. And when this cloth touches them, they feel as if Krishna himself, it is as if it is the touch of Sri Krishna. So Ramani Shiramani, Prishapano Nandi, Neela Vasana Paddhan. That beautiful bluish cloth with the deep remembrance of Sri Krishna, feeling as if Shri Krishna is touching her in anticipation of going to meet with him. Chinna Puratajini, Bana Vikasini, Bada Kavari Hari Pran. And her hair, Kabari means um, ponytail. So hair, there are so many hairs and they are free, but then they become bound in a ponytail. Now they cannot move. So for Krishna, he sees every hair on the head of Radhika like his own pran. You know, in your body you have 72,000 nadis. So when, when we are fanning Shimanti Radhika, then we think that each hair in the Chamara is one of our 72,000 nadis and we worshipping Radhika with all our prans. So similarly, Krishna is thinking, oh my pran huh? is each hair on the head of Radhika. And Radhika is thinking, Haripada Nakakoti Prist Parayantasimma Tatikalayantam Pranakoti Erabistam And Radharani thinks, that the light emanating from the very tip of the edge of the toenail of Sri Krishna is more dear to her than her own prance. Badakavari Hari Pran, but now Hari's Pran is bound. Why? 
Radhani's manobhav swarupini. When her hair is tight, that means she's in mahan, contrary mood. So at that time when Radhika is in the contrary mood and refusing to accept the advances of Sri Krishna, then Krishna feels like his prans are bound. But when in their loving pastimes her braid becomes open, ah, now only then Krishna becomes his pran is free. So Badaka Vairi Hari Pran Babarana Mahandita Hari Raspandita Radharani is decorated with so many abaran, golden ornaments, toe rings, finger rings, nose ring, earrings, uh, ankle bells, waist bells, very, very beautiful, all jingling and capturing the heart of Sri Krishna. Hari Rasa Pandita and she is a pandit, a very learned scholar in Hari Rasa. She knows how to please Krishna. How? Naturally. She never went to school to learn how to please Krishna. Naturally she knows. Just like Brinda Devi has said, one morning Radha and Krishna they came out of the kunj and Brinda Devi went into the kunj. When she saw, she looked around the kunj and she saw oh, drops of beetle juice here and there. She saw the lack of radicular on his feet here and there. She saw the kasturi and chandan from Krishna's body here and there on the petals. She saw broken flower garlands and pearl necklaces scattered here and there. And only by seeing the evidence of Radha Krishna's Leela, she could understand so much about their beautiful pastimes. And Brinda Devi was amazed. She said, Chakrida Yadra Jasi Randi Jasutra Badha Gokarna Matra Chikura Navavidya Karna Sayam Kuta Prabhara Vibra Matkushalani Radhyada Gistra Bhatta Bhairi Jigaya Bhairi Jitam Jigaya The meaning is Oh, it seems like only yesterday Seems like only yesterday. Chakrida Yadra Jasi Randi Jasutabada. Radhika was a little girl. Hmm? Just running around. Her hair was tied with red thread. And she did not have the Badakaveri Haripran long. Only she has small pigtails like this. And these pigtails go karna matra chikara nabapitta karna. They're only long enough, they're like the ears of a calf. You know the ears of a calf, they flop down like this. So Radharani's pigtails are just like this. Not very long, only down to here. Nabapitta Karna. And she just had an ear piercing ceremony. So her ears are pierced and there's still some ghee and the turmeric on the ear to make sure that there's no injury, uh, that there's no infection in the newly pierced ear. And that little girl, with her pigtails and newly pierced ears, she's going in front of a mirror and trying to look like this. And her pigtails are going like this and the earrings are swinging and she's very pleased with her new. Now she has earrings. Oh, it seems like only yesterday. So, Sayam Kutapa Koshalani. How is it possible that in such a short time she became Koshalani? So very expert in all loving pastimes. As Brinda Devi can see by all the evidence in the Nikunj. So Radhika is a pundit. Madun Madati Yovane Pramodamana Mandite Priyan Radha Ranjite Kalavilas Pandite Ananya Danya Kunja Raja Kama Keli Kovide Kadakari Shasi Mam Kribaka Takshabajanam Chilaka Sushobhutaba And Radhika is wearing such beautiful tilak. Hmm? Marathi Manjari has painted Kam Yantra, the Kam Yantra to hypnotize Krishna on the forehead of Radhika. Subhagamirgamadena khanda subhan subhatte 
Kila kami halala te te ibi mo dat bidaya. Masri na gusto na chacham arpay chacha gatre. Sta na yuga mai piganda is chitta tam kim karese. Haha, when will the day come when I will take various colors of sindoor and chandan and make a very beautiful kam yantra on the forehead of Radhika that signifies her so bhagya. So, tilaka su so bitabal. That means. On her forehead is the sign of her great fortune. Great fortune means that by her love, by her beautiful loving services, she can control Sri Krishna. And by people action, by association, it does not mean only the tilak, but all over her body. Her sakis have done very beautiful patravali, means uh, decorations of vines with flowers and leaves on her body in Kasturi. So kanchuli ka chadi ka stanamani mandita kajala nayani rasal. Her breast covered by kanchuli. This kanchuli is her bar of modesty because she looks very beautiful, so she's covering, covering herself with the kanchuli. There are many confidential meanings here. Kajala nayani ras and her eyes are decorated with kajal. Sri Raghunath Das Kaswami said this kajal. You see, every part of Radhika's body, every ornament, every cosmetic is actually Mahabhav, made of some mood of transcendental love. Just like a doll made of sugar. If you make a doll out of sugar, then this doll is sweet in the front, on the back, on the sides, on the top, bottom, everywhere is just sweetness. So Radhika is like a doll made of Mahabhav. Huh? So the black kajal on her eyes, this is called brain kutilya. The crookedness, the crookedness of brain. So, Radharani's brain is very crooked. Aheri vagati prem nasu bhava kutila bhavet. It is said that brain moves like a snake. If a snake wants to go in this direction, his head goes there, and then it goes that way and that way. So the snake's going like this and gradually moving in that direction. So Radhika's love is like that, very crooked. It manifests in as if it's the opposite of love. Sringara yani bhavatimma bisara yani Vikshanta kanta badanam pari vritta yante Vritanchala ahari sani ni maani yani Samprapya tajana sudam rishita bhavani Srila Vishnu Chavitaka said When will I decorate Radhika in beautiful blue cloth Abharana mandita and so many abharans and kajo and tilak And then bring her to meet with Krishna But as she approaches the kunju where Sri Krishna is eagerly waiting as soon as she sees him and Krishna sees her, then she changes her mind and turns around and starts turns around and starts to leave. And as she's leaving, when will I catch her by the veil and pull towards Krishna? And at that time, she'll wave her finger at me. Some prapyatajana sudam, and I'll get the nectar of Radharani's abuse in my ears. Let me go, Kalankini. I am not a girl with a bad reputation like you. Why did you bring me here? It's a trap. Like this, Radharani is abusing her sakis because love is, she wants to meet with Krishna so much. But prema nadiyaki sada ota bahida, love always becomes manifest in opposite way. Kishila yushayana tali kurukami amusaratam radikei taola parapalava vari parapavam See, Jaidev Goswami, he said when Radhika comes to the Kunj and she sees Krishna and she's leaving, then the Sakis pull her back. And then they bring her into the Kunj. And then they're about to leave and leave Radhika alone with Krishna, but she catches it, don't leave me alone here with me. And Krishna sees this is a very delicate moment. If I don't say the right thing, she may just go home and then all my desires will be unfulfilled. Alas, alas. So Krishna speaks very sweetly. Oh, please. Those who are alike should associate together. So here is a very soft, beautiful bed of lotus petals. And your lotus feet are very soft. So they should come and stay together. These petals, they have enmity towards your lotus feet. Because they think we are softer and more fragrant than you. So you should come and your lotus feet should come and defeat them. So Krishna speaking, 
This is Chatu. <laughs> Chatu Vatka. Flat, very sweet and flattering words. For the tender and delicate heart of Radhika, because now his whole life is in the balance. Will she meet him or not? So, Kajala Nayani Rasao. The, the Kajal on Radhika's eyes is the crookedness of her love. Hmm? Also, Kajal is one metaphor, also used by Radhika herself. If Krishna, just like in Rasalila, he took Radhika alone through the forest and they played together so nicely. But when Krishna heard other Sakis were coming, he said, oh, let's go, let's go there, throw it into the forest. But I'm tired. I cannot take another step. If you want to go, you can carry me. And then Krishna disappeared. Hmm? It was such a shock, she cried out. Ha nata, Ramana Presta, Kwasi Kwasi Mahabuja, Dasyaste Kripanayame, Sake Dasha Sanidim. Oh Raman. Oh my Raman. Oh my dearest. Where are you? Where are you? I will die just now if you don't embrace me. Mahabuja with your strong arms. And Radhika fainted and became unconscious. So at that time, the Sakis remember that. And they think, oh, Krishna is very bad sometimes. Hmm? He's not always Delalit Nayak. The Delalit Nayak, you know, Krishna has 96 heroic moods. And the best is Delalit Nayak. That he's very submissive to Radharani and trying to please her in all ways. Hmm? But sometimes he'll just disappear without warning and give so much pain. Then he becomes Shatnayak. So the Sakis, they criticize him. Oh Krishna, what kind of lover are you? And they make an interrogation of him. Everything is there. Shukadeva Swami has described in the Rasa, Rasa Panchadhyay. Then sit him down, please. Krishna, come sit down. We have to have a conversation. Hmm? Tell me. There are three types of lovers. One who reciprocates. One who reciprocates with someone even though they don't reciprocate with him. Or one who never reciprocates whether he is loved or not. Can you explain about these three types of lovers? That means that they're asking Krishna indirectly. Which is best and which one are you? In other words, they're trying to make him own up and take the blame. Why did you leave my Radhika? And break her heart? Cry in the night. But if you criticize Krishna to Radhika, then Radhika will say, No. Krishna may make me feel like the most fortunate girl in the whole of Braj by embracing me and give pain to me by crushing me in his embrace. Or he may break my heart by disappearing. Whatever he does, he can do. Hmm? But still, he is my pran, and no, there is no one else. So Radhika's love is like that. So Radhika will say, no, no, no. Don't criticize my Krishna. It's true that sometimes he gives me pain. But when he gives me pain, it's just like a Saki putting kajal on my eyes. Hmm? Because applying black kajal to the eyes, it stings. It's, it stings a little bit, but still, it's done. Why? Because after a few moments, it will dry and be cooling and shining very beautifully. Hmm? So Radhika's love is like this, like kajal. The, how kajal is applied. She feels that, oh, whatever fault Krishna has, whatever he does, even if he seems cruel to me, he's not being cruel. It's just like applying kajal, because after a little time, he knows that the brain will shine even more beautifully than ever before. So now Srila Bhakti Nautakur is saying, Sakala Chodhya Se Radha Charane Give up everything and take shelter of the lotus feet of Radhika. Dasi Oyo Bajo Paramap Jatane Jatane means endeavor. Param means highest. Make a very, your strongest, strongest and best endeavor. Dasi hoya bajo. To become Radha Dasi. Whatever it takes. Do or die. 
सौं गार्य किरान देखिए जहाँ राति गौर लील गार्य पर परिहा राति the goddess the wife of cupid the god of love gauri the wife of mahadev shiva veela the shakti of lord narayan in vaikuntha they are very proud of their beauty but saundarya kirna dekhiya jaha when the rays of radharani's beauty spread out then rati gauri and leela their pride is completely vanquished they feel insignificant सची लक्ष्मी सत्या सोपग बलाने परजीत होए जहरा चरने एंड इवन दो सची द वाइफ ऑफ इंद्र लक्ष्मी द वाइफ ऑफ लोद नारायण सत्या भामा इन द्वारका द वाइफ ऑफ कृष्ण इन द्वारका सो पग्य बलाने दे थिंक दैट दे आर वेरी वेरी फॉर्च्यूनेट बट व्हेन दे सी द फॉर्च्यून ऑफ श्रीमती राधारानी देन दे आर कंप्लीटली डिफीटेड Krishna Basikari Chandra Ali Adi and Chandra Ali also she is also defeated by Radhika's Krishna Basikari her power to control Krishna so this is very deep Rup the Srila Bhakti Nath Thakur here is paraphrasing the prayers of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Ratin Gauri Lele Tapi Tap Ratin Gauri Lele Api Tapati Soundarya बलनाय सची लक्ष्मा सत्या पराभवति सौभाग्य बलनाय वसीकारै चंद्रावली ब्रज मुक नवीन ब्रज सती चिपत्यारात यातम हरि दैत रादम वजमन श्री रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी हैज सेड दिस इन संस्कृत नाउ श्री भक्ति नाथ को इज ओपनिंग इट आउट इन सिंपल बंगाली लैंग्वेज फॉर टू सिंग एज डीप मेडिटेशन Why is Raghunath Das Goswami writing this verse? How Radharani's beauty defeats Rati Gauri Leela, her good fortune defeats Sachi Lakshmi Satya, her power to control Krishna controls is um, defeats Chandravali. Why? He is coming from Rupa Goswami, the Jain Nilamani. There is a quality of the prem of Radhika. It is called Uru Prema Sampadvati Brinda Ati Shaita. Very easy to remember. <laughs> Uru Prema Sampad means a great treasure of love. There are some goddesses who have a great treasure of love. So that that is called Uru Prema Sampad Vati. Like Bhagavati is a woman who has good fortune. Kalavati means a woman who is artistic. So Uru Prema Sampad Vati. Those goddesses who have a very high level of prem, Brinda. the whole group of them atishayetwa that means to exceed them to thoroughly exceed them so radhika's prem has the quality uru prema sampadvati brind atishayetwa in the stage of prem stay man pna rag anurag bhav mahabhav rudabhav adirudabhav modan when radhika's love comes into the state of modan then this manifest that all these goddesses just become completely defeated hmm? so this is the inner meaning of this kirtan so that modern akya mahabhav has such a quality it was glorified by lord shiva to parvati he said loka ati tad jand kauti kam api chai kali kam yat sukham dukham chaitam pugat pitag yadi राधिकाधिकारवती in the entire three worlds in all of the universes in past present and future were gathered together in one pile and all the distress all the pain suffering and tears in all of the planetary systems the three worlds in all of the universes past present and future were gathered together in another pile 
then these two piles would not even be equal to two drops in the ocean of the happiness and distress simultaneously that Radharani feels in her praying to Sri Krishna. This is the modern bath that Srila Bhakti Nautakur is describing here. It's so incredible that even from the stage of Bhav and praying in the early stages, then in love of meeting, there's a little bit of fear that after some time we'll have to be separated. So there's a little feeling of separation at the time of meeting in the stage of Prem, Stay, Amman. And because of that fear of impending separation, then the love is always fresh. Every second is one is very thirsty for that. Mm -hmm. And at the time of separation, there's always some meeting. Mm -hmm. Because at the time of separation, a spurting may take place, a vision of Krishna in the heart, or in a dream, mm -hmm. or even outward, a bahi spurti, outwardly. So in this way, meeting is experienced with a little separation, or separation experienced with some meeting, or one may become completely absorbed in that meeting, and then meeting and separation are experienced in a serial. First separation, and then it turns into meeting. Or first meeting, and then in Prem by Chitra, it turns into separation. So meeting and separation are experienced serially. But what happens when Radhika's Ruddha Bhav comes? This is not even in Chandravali's group. Only gopis in Radhika's group have this. And Shamala and her group, they can have to some degree because they associate with Radharani's group. Huh? So, in this stage, there is full meeting and full separation simultaneously. Just like, if there's no hunger, then there's no pleasure in eating. If there's no food, hunger is just pain. And if there's food but there's no hunger, then food is also pain. Hmm? So the two have to be there, the food and the hunger, the meeting and the separation. But the thing is, when you have food, at first you're hungry, and as soon as you begin to eat, the first few bites, that's the maximum happiness. <laughs> right? Because you have full hunger, but, and you're just starting to eat. But as you're eating, the hunger is going down, and the pleasure of the eating is also going down. So it quickly goes down. But in this... Uh, bhav, modern Bhav, that Srila Bhakti Thakur is describing here, there is simultaneously full hunger and full tasting at the same time, so that is a maximum Ananda. That is Paramananda. Therefore, Purnamasi Devi said, only those who have this love for Krishna can know its sweet and crooked way in which it attacks the heart. It is like a mixture of amrita and poison together. If a person takes a shower in Amrita, nectar, then the nectar becomes very proud of its power to give pleasure. And if someone will drink fresh, deadly, kalakut, bish, then that poison is very proud of its power to give pain. But in the presence of this brain, which is like a mixture of poison and nectar, then both nectar and poison, they all become shy, embarrassed, and think, ah, oh, we are weaklings, we have no power at all. Hmm? So Srila Vishnu Thakur Thakur here said, Lampakta tana pamunam vishyam prakurvam aswadayan apimadatta vitam tadanaha aladiyam amrita rashva iva jilokim santapayam pralayasura iva babati. In this love of Radha and Krishna, the frame itself has lampatata. Lampata, a lampat is a greedy person. Very greedy, they're never satisfied. So the prema of Radha Krishna has lampatata. 
And because of this lampatata, when they meet each other, Napapanam Vishayan Prakurva, it's as if they have never met before. As if it, everything is completely new. And even when they meet, then the next moment, as they're meeting, they feel as if they have not met. It's a thirst that cannot be quenched. So Vishnu Chakrataka is saying, Lampatyatanabhavanam Visham Prakurava. And so the meeting causes a taste which is thoroughly intoxicating. And it gives such a pleasure. Ah, Ladayan. Amrita Rashmi Ivaba Bhati. Just like from the moon, all Amrita comes. So this, from this meeting of Radha and Krishna, it is like a moon of nectar that floods the three worlds with nectar. Everything. You know, Dhanvantara appeared with a pot. It's very difficult to get one drop of nectar. There are four incarnations of the Lord involved. Karma was underneath the mountain, Vishnu was on the top, Ajita was churning, then Mohini Murti came. That's already four. And then Dhanvantara. Five incarnations of the Lord just to get one pot of nectar. But this meeting of Radha Krishna is like the three worlds from top to bottom become flooded with nectar. Hmm? But at the same time, Santa Payam Pralayasur Ivabhabhati, it's like the sun at the time of the annihilation of the universe. When the sun becomes so hot and all the planets are burnt and destroyed. That nectar and that sun at the same time. The reason Vishwataktako is giving the example of the moon and the sun is because the sun is heating and the moon is cooling. But the sun heats and the moon is cooling depending on the nature of the receptacle. Right? If you put wood in the sun, it doesn't heat up so much. But glass or metal or stone will become red hot. You cannot, you cannot touch it. You will burn. So in the same way, each person, in accordance with their dedication to the lotus feet of Radhika, they feel the heat of the poison of praying, and they feel the coolness of the nectar of the joy of meeting at the same time. Hmm? Because Mahabhav has one quality called the Avadashrai Vritti. It spreads out and pervades those who are close enough to see and hear. So Thambula Apana Pada Madhina Payoda Nadi Sara Nidi Brinda Ranya Maheshwara Pratyaya Stoshi Anti Praya Prana Presta Api Kulada Pitilasa and Kochita Bumikai Kali Bumi Shirupa Mandri Mukasta Dasikasa and Sraye Sila Bhagavanat Taskaswami is saying I want to take shelter of Rupa Mandri who is the leader of all of Radharani's maidservants because at that time when Radha Krishna are meeting together in the Rikunja, then Radhika's contemporaries, Lalita, Vishaka, Chitra, Chambakalata, Indulaika, Tungavita, Ranaga Devi, Sudevi, because they're contemporaries of Radharani, she's shy in their presence. So they recede and they'll go and sit under a tree on the bank of Jamuna. But the Dasis, they will stay there and freely enter and come and go and serve Radha and Krishna, whatever they need at that time. So if they are close enough to see and close enough to hear Radha Krishna's beautiful pastimes, then what will happen? Oh, it is as if for them the universe becomes flooded with nectar and at the same time they are burning in the sun at the time of the annihilation of the universe. They can experience this. So this is why Srila Bhakti Nau Thakur is saying, Sakala Chajiya Sei Radha Chani Give up everything and make a very intense endeavor to try to be the Dasi of Shimati Radhika. Hari Dvaita Radha Chana Prayasi Bhakti Noda Shri Godrum Abasi This Bhakti Noda Thakur, the resident of Godrum, is praying, aspiring for the service of the lotus feet of Prishapana Nandi. Sila Bhakti no Thakur Ki Jai! Sila Bhakti no Thakur has written many, many songs. We should, according to our Adhikar, first follow his songs of Sharnagati and be surrendered. Then follow his songs of 
the mm, glories of Harinam. Yashomati Nandana Bajapara Nagara Gokula Ranjana Kana. Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chadi Uttaji Jiva. Balo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva. Nam, he has written Nam Kirtans. Then he has written Rup Kirtans. Janama Safalaja Krishna Darashanaja Bhagya Hayachi Ekubha Vikasi Arindayan Kare Krishna Darshan Chari Jeeva Chite Rabika O Saki, if someone will see the son of Nandamaraj just once, his life is successful. His heart will blossom, his eyes will blossom, and all Chitta Vikara will stop. You go into a Samadhi, into trance on the beauty of Krishna. Tribanga Bangimarupa, how he is standing in Tribanga form beneath the Kadamba tree. So, Srila Bhakti Nautakura has given Rup Kirtan, he is given Gun Kirtan, Leela, and then Rup, Gun, Leela, Parika, and Seva. These kirtans, they begin to describe Radha Seva. Choratoha Purushabhima Kinkari Hoyinu Ajika Kinkari Hoyinu Ajika Rajavipine Saki Sat Seva Bukuru Radhana Ganto Bimala Mano Harini Niti Radha Krishna Bohi. So Nam Kirtan, Rup Kirtan, Gun Kirtan, Seva Kirtan. Chodata Purush Abhiman. When will I give up the Purush Abhiman? Identification with this body as the enjoyer of this world. King Kari Hoinum Ajika. Hey Kana. Kana. You know, Krishna is very difficult to say. Krishna is like a K. I'm going to ra, I'm going to sh. Hmm? So if you're very emotional, it's hard to pronounce Krishna. So like, Kana. Oh Khan, today I have become your kinkari, your maidservant. In the forest of Vrindavan, when will I be there? And my Saki will give me an order, make some garlands. And then I'll make. Kanto bimala manoharini. Every day I'll make garlands. And I give to my Saki and watch from afar with great wonder as she places them around the nets of Radha and Krishna. So in this way, from beginning to end, Srila Bhakti Nautakura has taken her hand. Oh, come on. Sing the song of Sharnagati. Surrender, surrender. Guru Dev Kripa Bindu Diya. Have devotion to your Guru. Vaishnava Thakur. Pray to the mercy of the Vaishnavas. Like this. Nam Kirtan, Gun Kirtan. Seva Kirtan, Leela Kirtan, everything, every step of the way, Srila Bhakti Nautakura has swept the path for us to attain our perfection. Srila Bhakti Nautakura ki jai, Tadiya Abhibhakti Dimatsu ki jai, Itai Gaura Premanande, So always be you may, by physically, you may be in whatever, North Carolina, but in your heart, always live with Srila Bhakti Nautaku in Godrum Dvipa. Hearing and chanting and following in his footsteps and immersed in the current of his moods. <laughs>